Hello, family, friends, and fans. It's Seaman. I tried to dress nice today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, having a conversation with one of the local supporters here, Ready Residency. I recruited him. Uh, he's been a patient of mine many times. Yo, what up, Doc? Pretty hardcore guy. For those of you who don't know, I uh, am near Detroit, Michigan. That's Detroit, Michigan. Apparently the only place in the United States that has this nexus of I can travel south and get into Canada. Explain that crap to me. It makes sense, geographically and all, but seems like magic. So anyway, what am I doing during residency? So I am in my third year of residency out of five. So, don't be a punk. Third out of five. That's come up on fourth, though. It's really, for those who don't know, July 1st is the magical date that you transition years and the newbies come in, the rookies. Uh, yeah. So, I am currently researching things. Uh, I think there were some recent changes in the ACGME. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, it's basically the National Academy uh, that controls uh, general medical education. GME typically refers to general medical education. And it controls residency requirements. They're the ones that put the hour laws into place. And they're the ones who uh, have the where I have to report surgical cases to. If you don't know, when you go into surgery, you have to report what cases you're doing. Oh, so you want to know surgery? You want to know surgery? This my type of surgery, son. And you have to meet specific amounts of uh, what they call key indicators. These indicators are things that are pretty specific to your specialty usually. Um, for instance, you'll have, um, for me, you know, neck dissections, uh, cancer resections, thyroids, parathyroids, uh, tonsils, adenoids. Uh, actually, tonsils and adenoids may not be. Airway stuff is bronchoscopy, um, you, you know, laryngo uh, laryngology procedures, sinus cases, uh, ear cases. These are, these are ones that I have to report, and I have to meet a specific number. Going on, so uh, third year medical, uh, or third year right now, I'm doing that research. What did I do this year? I did a combination of um, kind of a, a general ENT head slash head and neck with my chairman. That was three months. The next three months was the Veterans Association Hospital. Um, and then there was the uh, last one was pediatrics. The, the one just before this research. I'm ending on research. Uh, which was risky because research, you have a little more time to like study and stuff. And if you take in-service, which is the, uh, your program will pay for you. At least I've never heard of a program not paying for you. To take the practice uh, otolaryngology boards every year. They are the same boards that are administered to the actual graduates. Uh, however, uh, you just get scored. You're not going to be board certified if you pass, etc. And they're not going to tell you if you quote pass boards like they would tell you in the real, you know, if you took the real thing. And you take them after they take them. So, which makes sense. They wouldn't want you to give the, uh, <laughs> the question answer or the questions to the people that are taking it for for the, all the marbles, if you will. So the uh, um, the. Boards are administered, or in services typically administered in March, and this was no different. Um, and so we took, I took him in March, so that meant I was on my third rotation. So it's not like I had extra time to study. Thankfully, I did pretty good. So, yay. I mean, it's just an indicator. Really, you could flunk the thing every year, or at least get a not, like what would be a not passing score. Yeah, not like passing score. And... If, as long as you pass them when you take them for real, you're, you're golden. Um, these are just to indicate kind of where you are. Um, so I took that in March. Some of the other things I do, obviously, were the weekend courses. For those of you who don't know, typically you have a temporal bone dissection lab. 
Uh, this is where you dissect the temporal bone. For those of you who don't know what the temporal bone is, it is a uh, bone here on the side of your head that includes the ear. It's made up of four parts. Um, and uh, you basically practice ear surgeries. Uh, mo almost every ENT. I've never heard of an ENT program not having that. Uh, that's pretty much like blanket always. Every ENT program has this. Um, it's the best way to practice ear surgery. It can be a very dangerous surgery if you haven't gotten practice in on a cadaver uh, before. So we do this. Um, we also do a combination where we, we dissect it out and we explain it to the medical students because if you have been to med school basically like the, the you'll just like take a hammer and chisel and you're like I don't know what the hell is going on here and like drill through crap and you can't see anything and it's just it's a waste of time so we decide, decided to pair with the the uh, the medical school and kind of help that get an idea uh, anyway so we did that we uh, we did the sinus course which is where you practice with the cameras not every, most most ENT, uh, ENT programs have this, but it's it's very good. It's a good help. The uh, other thing we do is a plastics course. Look, dog, you know why this keep going off? Cause I'm smoking freaking hot, dog. This kind of helps you with uh, some of the local flaps, understanding that and dissecting it, and how to do that anatomically and ge uh, geometrically as well. There's a lot of geometry to that. The other thing is the we do a research, I hate it, local research presentation on a weekend day. Uh, it basically is encouraging local, uh, like our research. Every resident has to present something, no matter how crappy it is. And that's okay. Then the, what's the other thing? We did an airway course. It wasn't that great. Could have been run better. But those are, those are really good courses to learn how to, um, basically use the uh, bronchoscopic cameras and esophageal cameras um, and and uh, what uh, instruments that you can apply to those and how to use them correctly especially on different objects so the good part was is like they, they showed us a variety they had a peanut a coin uh, a battery you know these these things are commonly swallowed by children for some God knows what reason and uh, you kind of have to know how to fish it out and what to do uh, <laughs> what to do if you're in trouble um, yeah. so I did all that and I'm currently on research enjoying that life uh, next year I will be progressing on to a combination of head and neck surgery man the only type of head and neck I do is with the girl I'll be necking her and then I won't well I better not tell you about the other part you know what I'm saying uh, which will come my first three months what's next Ah, uh, plastics, facial reconstructive, then uh, neurotology, and finally ending on uh, endoscopic sinus and skull-based surgery. Uh, those are all three-month blocks. That's how we do it. All right, so that's what that's an update on what I've been doing. People have been asking about that. Um, I'll try to come up with some more bids if there's interest, and uh, we'll. Keep moving on. But it's good to talk to you all. I hope you noticed that I'm in the exact same spot I shot the uh, most recent video in, which I'm very proud of. Yeah. And uh, again, good to see you all. Let me know any questions. I try to answer as best I can. Unless you're crazy. No, I'll answer as best I can. See ya. Yo, 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 C. Rose, I got percussion to get a discussion about what you've been up to this year. My frustration be held now on against you, freestyling doubt. I tell you, you in residency, but man, you can't ever cure me.